you were running across the farm. grass-fed and finished and so this is the greatest time of year and what we typically do with our cattle is we use the managed intensive grazing system to run them in small tight uh, paddocks to graze so they can deposit a lot of manure and feces and graze the grass and then we move them off that patch and let it rest for six plus weeks. Right now it's kind of the end of the spring grass season and so we're grazing off this field so we can come in and no-till plant uh, some summer grasses and, and, and legumes into the field. So everything that we do kind of works together to uh, to uh, nourish the soil and, and all at, the, at the end of the day what we're trying to do is leave this place in better shape than we found it. Yeah. And you know, I, talking about this model of, agricultural, uh, of agriculture at scale, I mean, this is less efficient than confinement house and feedlot and all that, but we're concerned with nutrient density and quality over quantity. And so I think if more local farmers started adopting these practices, uh, it would be a good thing for our world. And then, you know, I like talking about this now. Would you consider it then less efficient now and more efficient in the future, almost like an investment in, in ways? Well, yeah, I mean, you, you invest in your health, right? And the yeah. health of our, uh, of, the, of the earth and, and, and your, your own health. And so. He's looking at me. Yeah, I, I need you guys to get to see this guy, so I'm going to turn him. I'm going to turn it right here so we can get in there. Um, okay, let me see if we have any questions that, that we can tell. Not yet, but yeah, this is this, this is the guy that ran me. Um, yeah, and speaking of just, you know, investing in our health and just investing in, um, in, yeah, <laughs> in the farming and the soil and the planet, what can we do as, you know, consumers of I think it's important to support your local farmers and ranchers and also ask lots of questions. You know, it's a common uh, mistake a lot of consumers make is they make assumptions based on some key buzzword they saw in a package or where they bought the stuff. They assumed that it was a certain way. So ask your farmers and ranchers what the cattle are eating, what they're growing, what their forage plan is, what their practices are. Um, you know, regenerative agriculture is not like a black and white thing. There are a lot of different ways to skin that cat and go about it, and, and lots of farms have slightly different methods. But it, you know, at the, at the core, it's all fundamentally similar. <laughs> and people could change too. So I think it's kind of similar to you said. It's not just you know take one thing and, and corner that farm. Just have those conversations with them because yeah. I think that you'll you'll find out more so <laughs> more so than anything that you know they're open to change and change their perspective. And I think that if we start having the conversation, that is sort of our first approach to um, a healthier planet. But anyways, I don't I don't know if you were talking about Sam's farm in particular, but you can actually find him online. Um, Shirttailcreekfarm.com. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, shirttailcreekfarm.com. We ship nationwide. And then and if you're in Austin, you can go to Local Pastures. It's our store in Austin where it's open seven days a week and it's on Old Turf Street. So, yeah. And that's really cool. So that was my first time actually shopping at like going meat shopping in a yeah. trailer. So um, he just started this concept with another farm that, uh, when did you guys start? A couple months ago? Uh, August. August. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Super cool. I'm going to show you guys that in uh, my upcoming stories or reels that um, what he's got going on there. So, and, and that's obviously farm the trailer. Yeah. Real distribution there's no middle channel there yeah. so in case you can't make it at the markets on saturdays or sundays but anyways he does have a shop online i wish that you saw that you shipped your eggs i know <laughs> only, only these eggs we also
chickens are on a corn and soy free ration. So they've got Milo, wheat, uh, sunflower meal. Hey, if anybody emails me, I'll send them the actual ingredient list. Um, and then, uh, yeah, yeah, I've, I've got it ready to go. I actually get asked a lot, so I'll, I, I'm happy to send that out. Our, uh, but the key, key point is uh, everything here is corn and soy free, except our meat chickens. And of course the cattle wouldn't have any grain at all. They're 100% grass fed and finished. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, and they weren't always fed. Corn is, or they weren't always corn and soy free, right? So you the, transitioned In the beginning, we had some flocks of laying hens that had corn and soy, and we had the two product varieties. We had like a regular and a corn and soy free non GMO, and then we transitioned to 100% corn and soy free for that. And then our, our pork, at the very beginning, we had some corn and soy based feed, but we transitioned away from that several months ago. So, cool. yeah. yeah, and this is, this is why it's important again to always have the conversation.